I mean, the, the great thing about these mushrooms is that, again, they've been around for thousands of years. There's lots of stories about them, anecdotal stories. There's a lot of research as well. And then I guess from our point of view, we just believe in growing uh, and extracting in Australia because most of these mushrooms at the moment, 95% will come from China. G'day ladies and gentlemen, the Batsmani. Hope you're doing well and welcome to this episode. But before we get started, don't forget, you can listen to this on iTunes, on Spotify if you're on the go. There's also the Clips channel if you want to digest them in smaller clips. And I've got my merch store restocked. There's stuff everywhere. Go and check that out right now. But today, this episode is brought to you by the good people at Surfshark VPN. These guys have been involved with the channel for a long time. I trust them. I use them myself. And basically, when you spend as much time on the internet as you do asleep, you need to be protected online. You have all your information there, your bank information, your, your, your passports, all that type of stuff. All that information is there, your passwords, all this business that you need and you need to have safe within your computers or your phone or wherever, whatever you use to browse the interwebs, that's where a VPN comes in handy and I trust Surfshark. There are data thieves out there trying to steal your personal information. Now, if you're using public Wi-Fi and you're not using a VPN, you are crazy, okay? You need to be doing that. And that's why you should choose Surfshark. You can also use Surfshark VPN to access things that you can't see in this country. Now, what do I mean by that? Streaming services like Netflix, for some reason, they have videos and movies and episodes and all that type of stuff that you can only see if you're in America. Right? That is ridiculous, right? Well, I think it is. So you can use Surfshark VPN to check them out. Also with YouTube, if there's an event that's being streamed somewhere that you can't see in your particular country, that's where Surfshark VPN comes in handy. If you feel like your internet speed is too low or it's heavy in your pocket, it's taking up all your data, all you need to do is use Surfshark VPN to block all the ads and it'll quicken that speed. It'll also reduce all the bandwidth and all that stuff that you don't understand. What it will do is it'll make it quicker, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I think you should choose Surfshark VPN, but to sweeten the deal, if you use the code Butterfield in in the checkout system, you will get 83% off and you'll also get one month free. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash Butterfield. The other sponsor for today's podcast is the amazing people at Lifecycle, Australian grown products, mushroom extracts, helping people get through their daily lives. Here they are right here, this amazing product, absolutely fantastic. I use their stuff and that's a big thing with everyone who is going to sponsor this show and they're gonna come on board. I want to be able to be able to use it myself and believe in it, otherwise I don't wanna give you guys something that is just, it doesn't work for anybody. It doesn't work for me. If it doesn't work for me, then I'm not gonna show you. Now, they have the reishi mushroom when you're looking to chill out, relax, or even you're looking to build your immunity, all right? That's always very important, particularly if you're a busy human being. The cordyceps mushroom, if you're looking to go on for a bit of a run, get a bit of exercise, or doing the dirty in the boudoir. One that I'm really interested in is the turkey tail. This is for the gut flora. If you're looking to help out your stomach, if you're taking antibiotics, or maybe you're feeling a bit of how hey, you're going in the old guts, look at some turkey tail. We've also got the lion's mane, right? I've used lion's mane before. It is really good stuff. It has cognitive and REM sleep effects. REM sleep, the part where you're dreaming, where you're relaxing, where you're rebuilding. This this is where Lime Maid steps in. The holy shiitake, ladies and gentlemen, is for keeping me feel beautiful. For all the people, when I'm on stage and I want to look my glowing best, shiitake, ladies and gentlemen. Now, all of these products have a fantastic ingredient in them. The highest pound for pound king champ of vitamin C in the world. That is the Kakuta Plum, so get stuck into that. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want to support these guys at Lifecycle, because they support this channel, they support this podcast, go to their website right now with a little coupon that says Buttsman10 and you'll get 10% off and you'll support this podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, let's jump into it with the man himself, the leader, the general, the man from life cycle, my now good friend, and soon to be yours, Julian Mitchell. Welcome to the show. Great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> you just said the difference between where you are in Byron Bay to New York. Mm -hmm. We're talking about how the rat race that's run over there is very different to people um, in Australia. And there's a lot of listeners to this show that mm -hmm. are, you know, American. Can you sort of compare the two countries perhaps with the, the mentality of the modern worker, if you will? For sure. And it's, and it's good and bad. There's yeah. different things from each, each city. But New York, I guess, coming from Australia, coming from growing up in a small town, being in Byron Bay um, and going to New York is quite a, a culture change and shift. And in many ways, good in terms of just things happening, people on the move, doing things, following their passion and and I guess chasing their dream, whatever that may be, that whole American dream thing is very alive and real mm. there. Versus in Australia, it's like 
what do you mean you have a dream? Sit down, you know, just relax sort of things, a bit more chilled. So that uh, hunger for something in New York is definitely there. But then it's also maybe what are they chasing? Uh, is something that's probably not actually going to fill them in terms of meaning or, or what they mm. really want to do. So they're chasing empty things at times. There's maybe a bit of a generalisation. but uh, Like chasing, yeah. rather than chasing a particular passion or field, they're chasing fame. Material possessions, fame. Sure. I want yeah. a Gucci jacket. Yeah. I want a Ferrari. Yeah. I'm just listing things that I want. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that type of shit. Rather than saying, okay, I want to change this or I want to uh, achieve this. Yeah. I, I, I found with myself, like mm. trying to reach goals, it's mm. often... Uh, the goal you have at the end of the day or the end of the week or whatever you want to do or the end of the year or the end of your life is often achieved by so many tiny goals that you don't see happening. Yeah, and of course, by the time you get there, you don't want that anyways. You're Mm. onto something else. It's always that sort of chase or that hunt um, is what you're sort of I mean, I've changed so many times Mm. with what I want. Like, I'm 26 now. So when I was 18, I wanted to... I'm probably younger than 18, probably about 15. All I wanted to do was play rugby league. Yeah. And then I realised that I was a bit of a pussy. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't achieve that. <laughs> so I moved on to comedy. Yeah. And like wanting to do that, it was great. It was an idea. It was a passion. Mm-hmm. Uh, in America, you sort of know that there's an open mic scene. You see it all the time. Here in yeah. Australia, you don't know shit. Yeah. Like, there's, yeah. there's no direct career path. Yeah. And yeah. I guess with exactly what you guys are doing as well, mm. a life cycle is like there's no direct career path to what you are achieving now. But mm. what were you doing at 18? What are you... What were you trying what was to I do? Doing? Yeah, I was trying to yeah, do a bit of Aussie rules, okay. um, playing sort of some some semi-professional football um, and then going to university, doing physio with the goal to be head of medical for a, an English Premier League team or an NBA team. And my first job out of uni was exactly that, working in the Premier League. So I sort of got wow. to it, got there a little bit, tasted it and went, oh, I don't like the taste of that. Who are we working with? Uh, the Wolves, or Hampton Wolves or the okay. Wanderers. So they okay. were in the Premier League. Yeah. yeah. And what was it like looking after, what, a deck of 50 players, 30 players? Yeah, 30 players who are sort of on, you know, between the ages of 20 and 30 on ridiculous amounts of money, like, you know, £50,000 to £200,000 per week. <sighs> um, they're just having fun <laughs> yeah. driving their camo Aston Martins yeah. and their Range Rovers and things. So it was, a, again, another crazy experience from going from Perth WA University there to into the Premier League. But um, it was great to see behind the scenes of all of that and how it all operates and is that yeah, was, like in comparison fun. to like a, a an Aussie rules or a rugby league club how mm-hmm. differently are they run to the Premier League clubs is there a lot more professionalism is it where does it stand because obviously there's a lot mm-hmm. more money involved I noticed that when I was in yeah. Manchester or yeah. Liverpool recently and they were playing Manchester we tried yeah. to get tickets and they were like yeah. 500 quid each or something yeah, like that. Yeah. it was madness crazy. the type of the type of cash that's getting thrown around yeah. there it's sort of uh, advanced and behind at the same time a bit like comparing Byron and New York it's like the, there's pluses and minuses, but with the, the Premier League in, say, England versus AFL, AFL is, and rugby is like work really hard. It's all about work rate, work rate, work rate, whereas football, uh, soccer in England is more like an artist sport where it's like, can I put that ball on the top of the net um, You know, one time in 90 minutes? That's all I need to do. If I do that, I'm a legend. Wow. And so they're not sort of work ethic based okay. in terms of versus these other sports, which are like must train all year round, three times a day, et cetera, et cetera. But in terms of the back ends, I guess it's all becoming very advanced. And wherever you see money, you see more research and you see better mm. professionals. That's why there was a lot of actual Australian uh, health professionals, physios in England, because there's more opportunities there than working for an AFL team, mm. just in terms of you know being in the biggest sport in the world, in the biggest club in the world, traveling around Europe, working with the best surgeons, all of those things, those career advancements were there so that it, money attracts the best talent. I can mm. imagine that. The difference between, okay, uh, 1990s rugby league, rugby union, AFL clubs in comparison to now, you know, 2020, mm. Man U, Liverpool, those type of places. The way that a player in the off season is trained, the mm. way that the player is trained during the week, tracked, you know, macros, all that type of stuff, mm. uh, following the diet strictly, make sure that the injury re- prevention and recovery is all, all those sort of schedules and uh, and those situations are all, are they, are they put down to like on paper, is, if a player is given this type of thing, what is, the, what is the change from 20 years ago to now as far as, I'm sure yeah. there's a million different changes, yeah. what are the main big changes? Is a, yeah. a player still enjoying the games as much, do you think? It's a good question. I mean, definitely from what I understood in the Premier League and I think even in AFL, there was high levels of depression. 
okay. both during uh, you know during the season, um, but then post career as well. So there's a lot of pressure there. And then there's this, I think, the enjoyment also comes from them just wanting to play the sport and love the sport and just keep being a kid mm. and enjoying it. But what happens is then all the nonsense comes in again, like the cars and the attention and the women and all of those things, which on the surface from the outside, everyone says, fuck, that's amazing. I want that. But then they get that. And I think there's still that emptiness void there. So the ones, the players that have done really well um, have just kept just loving kicking the ball around mm. um, and haven't got too caught up in... The other stuff, even though it's fun and whatever may come of it, um, not getting too attached to it, and it doesn't derail their career as well. You get off, you know, all of these, you know, rugby stories you hear about weekenders and all of those things that occur. Um, yeah, I guess that's been the biggest change is that there's been all this noise. Mm. You know, they've gone to become stars now. Mm. You know, they are people listen to them as disciples, or you know, they listen to what they have to say on social media and things, and so they're just always under the camera. Mm. Maybe 20 years ago they weren't; they did have some privacy. Um, well, I mean, I've heard stories about, like, my old man played for the Knights mm -hmm. in the Rugby League in Australia. And the stories that you hear about, not him, he was a professional, of course, but <laughs> other people, like, the things yeah. that they, if they happened today, yeah. you know, there would be all sorts going on. There'd yeah. be massive investigations and all yeah. that type of stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. and I mean, I think it's such a shame that, mm -hmm. that, is, that there is the spotlight on those type yeah. of people. Yeah. You compare the way that we treat, say, Premier League players or AFL players, uh, rugby league players, in comparison to how perhaps a fan of uh, mixed martial arts will treat a UFC fighter. If they're signed mm -hmm. to that roster and they get caught snorting coke or, or whatever or smoking mm -hmm. weed or whatever they're doing, it's almost like it's a completely different game because people are like, yeah. oh, yeah, that's something he would do. And then yeah. the UFC treats it differently. They're like, yeah, he's a dickhead, but oh, well, he's fighting mm -hmm. this weekend. Mm -hmm. Come and watch it. Yeah. It's weird how, I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen this with like with players here in Australia, how there will be a scandal and they go out and instead of um, acknowledging it, saying, listen, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Okay, I, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. We all know yeah. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. I was drunk. They hide. They go over to England. They play in yeah. the Super League over there for mm -hmm. the Rugby League and all that type of stuff. I just, I've, I've always said that the best way to deal with those horrible situations is come out the next day and go, "Yep, I'm a dickhead. Yeah. All right, yeah. listen, I'm in, I'm 20 years old. I make a million dollars a year. Yeah, sorry. The truth is, then they'll lose the sponsorship and then they'll lose other things. So it's like, what do you do in that situation? Mm -hmm. But Hard to say, hard to say what, what they should do, but um, it's a lot of pressure on them because, yeah, they're just sort of wanting to have fun and do different things, whatever fun means to them, but that comes with you know, a cost of yeah. their career. And, and a lot of them, as you said, with uh, with the depression and, and those mm -hmm. type of things and probably performance anxiety and anxiety in general. And mm -hmm. Someone uh, who suffered from anxiety for the last two years, me, mm -hmm. uh, I noticed and I thought that with success during my career, mm -hmm. making money, uh, selling out shows, doing all these things that I dreamed of doing. Yeah. I thought that I would be able to surpass all those problems. Mm -hmm. And I learned recently, probably within the last six months, maybe to a year, that none of that matters. Yeah. All this happiness, the, the idea that happiness comes from within, from within sounds ridiculous. Yeah. Sounds hippie, sounds yeah. you know, like something that the Buddha may have said. Yeah. But it is true. Yeah. There is no... Uh, well, maybe not no, but there's very few external stimuluses that can make you happy, or mm -hmm. stimuli rather, that can make you happy for a long period of time. Yeah, yeah. And if you're saying that people are experiencing that in the Premier League, yeah. where they, as you said, are making 250k mm -hmm. a week, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a terrifying thing for people to hear. Yeah, and it's, and it's like you've experienced it because you've got to that end point or that holy grail that you wanted to get to. And then you realise, oh, it's not really what I thought it would be. So that's the sad thing is that people may spend 10, 20, 30 years trying to get to that point and then they realise it. Maybe that's what a midlife crisis is, I'm not sure. Mm. For most males, it's like, oh, well, I, I did everything they told me to do in the book and I'm still not happy. And it's the same with some of these players. Um, so, yeah, it's really, I mean, it's very spiritual. It's pretty coming from someone living in Byron about that whole looking within for the answers of happiness and meaning. But it uh, sounds stupid, but there. it's true. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Yeah. You have to look within yourself mm -hmm. because there is whatever energy you got going on within yourself, or whatever uh, spirit you actually have. Yeah, those answers or those uh, those feelings of happiness come from within. Like I, I, I always say that it's very easy as a person that is gets stuck within themselves mm -hmm. to get lost in the catacombs that are your mind. Mm -hmm. And everyone's brain at some point in your life will become this 
this this honeycomb sort of area where you can get lost yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And it's important to be able to have things in place and put in place where you can actually get through that. And whether that be through meditation, whether that be through um, uh, you know, learning different things about mindfulness, whether mm-hmm. it be what I use is <coughs> CBD oil. Yeah. A lot of people talk about CBD oil. Another thing that I've used is lion's mane, which mm-hmm. is a mushroom extract. Mm-hmm. And that is your your biz. That's it what is. you're bringing it's to all, the world. That's what we're doing, yeah. yeah. So uh... when people hear mushies, they <laughs> go, you know, over in Bali, mm-hmm. thinking you're a penguin, Absolutely. sliding down the, hall, the <laughs> corridor of the hotel. Like, what are you doing? Mushies, exactly. People think shrooms, that buzzy word shrooms. They think poisonous shroom or they think portobello uh, on the on the breakfast plate or something mm. along those lines uh, with some bacon and eggs and the rest of it. So there's a whole world out there. It's a kingdom. So, you know, we think of animals as a kingdom and we think of plants as a kingdom. Fungi is an entire kingdom as well. So there's just so much stuff going on in that in terms of 5 million species. We've only identified 1% of that. So we really don't know what's <coughs> going on, but we do know things like lion's mane, have an amazing benefit to the brain in terms of re-stimulating the nerve cells, helping with memory, concentration, focus, REM sleep, deep sleeping. So they're tools for the toolkit to manage those modern day stresses. And that's something we, we spoke about before. I'm wearing mm-hmm. this uh, this ring here, aura ring. Now this isn't a sponsor. I pay with this my hard earned cash. <laughs> uh, they're expensive, but it's really interesting to learn about the sleep. Mm-hmm. People talk about, okay, you need to have exercise, you need to have your diet sweet, and you need sleep. Now I'm in bed for eight hours, and this reads your the the temperature of your skin, this or, or your blood temperature. It it, it reads uh, your, your heart rate variability to see yeah. how your heart your, reco- your body's recovering. It, it it sees where your resting heart rate is. It also follows your sleep, and that was the big reason I got this is because I wanted to see that what my sleep was actually like. I'm always on the road. I'm always doing this. I'm up late, looking at screens, writing, mm-hmm. all that type of stuff. And in eight hours I spend in bed, I'm only asleep for five. Mm. And the average time that I'm in REM sleep is between 21 minutes and 48 minutes, yeah. which is terrible. And most people that I, through my research I've looked at, it's between uh, an hour and a half and two and a half hours you want to be in that REM sleep, yeah. a REM, yeah. rep, rapid eye movement stage of sleep, which is the dream stage, I believe. Um, and that made me think, like how many other people who aren't paying any attention to their sleep. Mm -hmm. How many other people are experiencing the exact same thing? Waking up tired, waking up depressed, waking up sad, or they're not um, sort of dealing with life's problems. Because that's one of the things people talk about with sleep. It's a way to sort of, you know, go through and and digest or or clean out like a computer. You would clean out the the shit that you've got in your filter through the day. It does. It consolidates memory and it sort of resets and recharges things. And after working in in the Premier League, Brian and I, who started Lifecycle, the business, we started working in mining as health consultants. And so we did a lot of time on sleep in terms of shift work. And what you see goes hand in hand with poor sleep is poor mood. And if you do that enough times, then it starts to creep into depression and early symptoms just where you're irritable. And so then what also happens is what we know is you have raised cortisol from poor sleep and then you start to crave more sugar. And then that becomes a vicious circle because you crave more sugar. That's bad for your gut health. And we know with gut health, it's linked to brain health as well. It's like a gut brain access there for mental health. Mm -hmm. So your gut needs to be healthy to have good mental health as well. Can you explain so, the, the gut-brain axis? Because I know a lot of people sort of don't really get the idea mm. that even things like, uh, so SSRIs, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, are what is given to most people with uh, mm-hmm. depression or anxiety. And ser- they, they are there to sort of boost the availability of serotonin in the body. But serotonin comes from not just within the brain, it comes from your gut. It's mostly produced in your gut. Mostly produced exactly. in your gut. Yeah. So yeah. what does that mean for people? So it means we need to be paying attention to diet, which we all know we should be doing. But I guess, I mean, we were chatting to a neuroscientist in the US a few months ago about, you know, he spent his whole life researching brain and the mental health and realized, well, it's not in the brain, it's in the gut in terms of where it starts. And so keeping it super simple for people, it's just understanding that gut health is important. And we hear that all the time. What does that mean? It means, you know, uh, fermented foods. It means, you know, healthy green vegetables and leafy vegetables. It means minimizing sugars. Uh, and it means sort of, I guess, if you've been on a course of antibiotics or something along that nature, or you've had a surgery or something along those lines that you need to sort of take stock on your gut health. So it's just being awake to that, understanding that connection between sleep and recharging your brain, but also looking after your gut. And that's that gut brain axis because they contribute to each other. Poor sleep will result in a poor diet the next day, nine times out of 10, mm. because you're 
uh, discipline levels just drop considerably because your brain goes into mode of like, I must get through the day. Mm -hmm. Just give me any energy you can find. So, I mean, you're talking about a lot of people there mm. who are struggling with sleep. They've got stress, they've got kids, they've got bills, they've got all that type of things. How does someone even begin to sort out their gut, to step sort one. out their head? Yeah. What is step one for mm. people? I'm not asking you for the magic bullet here, yeah. but what are people There's do? a million books on gut health. I didn't write any of them, but uh, what would I suggest? I mean, from a mushroom point of view, we'd say there's a mushroom that does an amazing job at gut health. That's called turkey tail mushroom. It has a, a compound called PSK, so that's a big mouthful polysaccharide crescetin, which okay. it's just a compound that helps activate and proliferate uh, you know, healthy gut bacteria. What else does that? Again, sort of fermented foods, your fermented cabbages. I mean, if you look kimchi at is that type of stuff. South Korea, you know, kimchi is something they eat daily. Yeah. I'm not sure of the depression rates in South Korea and there's so many aspects and yeah. elements to it, but you know, kimchi, fermented foods. Um, also, I think locally grown food, of course, is another sort of buzzy one, but energetically that holds, you know, uh, you know, the benefits of that local environment and it hasn't traveled so far, so therefore there's more compounds and nutrients within that food. So it's general starting points, um, but what is yeah. it? What does a turkey tail do? Turkey tail, so yeah, helps activate and proliferate, so grow yeah. healthy gut bacteria. So it's like uh, like you're laying down the foundation sort of thing for the- A prebiotic. Okay, it's gotcha. a prebiotic. So probiotic you have after maybe a course of antibiotics or after something happens. Pre is prevention, so prebiotic is, is for the for the gut. So interesting. Yeah, it's just understanding that obviously with that depression, there's the element of sleep, there's the element of stress, and then there's the element of of what you're consuming diet wise. And obviously, uh, life cycle your business does sell an extract that is turkey tail. Yeah. But is anyone consuming this outside of an extract, or is it is it you know common in food? It's not common. It's not an edible mushroom, the turkey tail. So it's quite hard and fibrous, so you wouldn't be able to chew it down. Okay. It'd be like eating a dried wheat bix, uh, Gross. something like that. So okay. great. So these mushrooms have been used in Chinese medicine for a long time, boiled down into teas. Um, but I guess what we're doing in the mushroom space is trying to make them ultra convenient for people. Okay. Um, so you can consume them in your tea, in your coffee, in your smoothie, all these different range of extracts for these you know, benefits um, and they're becoming very popular, just like you mentioned CBD, mm. which has sort of been uh, left to the side for a long time because of that regulatory piece. Uh, the great thing about mushrooms and the mushrooms that we provide and grow and sell, uh, there's no regulatory barriers to entry in the US and across Europe and in Australia. So I find that strange because everything that seems to be quite good for you is often quite regulated very hard partially, that's <laughs> by a, the Australian government that, particularly. Yeah, it's an like I'm not one. sure where CBD is at at, at the moment. Mm. Uh, I think it's decriminalised. I'm not sure. Uh, I purchase it. Yeah. But, <laughs> and, um, and a lot of people do in this yeah. country. I mean, a lot of people, they just sort of say in their heads, I think enough's enough in the sense that I feel unwell and you're in survival mode. You just want to get better. Mm. Um, but you know what course of action they take from there on in is up to them, of course. And we had a gentleman in here CBD yesterday is, who yeah. was exactly saying exactly that, right? Yeah. He said pretty much word for word. He said, "I ha I ran out of ideas, and now I'm mm. trying to start yeah. on a course of CBD." And yeah. he uh, he said it's made him feel maybe ten percent better, mm -hmm. which is when you're in that mindset, as you said, yeah. uh, trying to it's life or death at this moment. Yeah, um, you're scrounging for ideas. Ten percent is a big play. You'll take it. Yeah. Absolutely, you'll yeah. take it. You see it on Today Tonight, so Current Affairs, which I watch every night regularly. Unfortunately, uh, I do too. <laughs> current Affairs is great yeah, viewing yeah. if you want to laugh. If I can't plug into you, then I'll plug into that. <laughs> so it's a, you get the same sort of cackle. But um, you know, you see parents that have got no option for their children, so it's like, well, what am I going to do? I don't have any children myself. But you know, when people are in that situation, when people are in survival mode, they'll do whatever they want to do. You see that with crime in, in low socioeconomic areas. You know, mm. They're in... Uh, survival mode. Well, I I, uh, I was taking CBD for a while there for uh, epilepsy. Mm -hmm. I have a weird form of epilepsy where I basically yeah. lose control of my head for 10 seconds. It gets stuck with that. I go blind in one eye mm -hmm. and I'm com completely conscious through the whole thing. But for a while there, I didn't know really, really what to do. I was listening to Joe Rogan talk about CBD oil and I heard a lot of the time that um, people use CBD as a way to control uh, epilepsy. Mm. I also found out that they use a ketogenic diet to yeah. control epilepsy and I was probably about 134 kilos at the time mm -hmm. and then got on the keto diet, controlled my epilepsy with it, yeah. without any meds yeah. and I got down to about 94. Mm -hmm. Now, um, 
after that, I got off the keto diet because I was on the road. Mm -hmm. And being on the road, I'm sure you know, very difficult to sort of maintain, particularly when you're in country towns and stuff like that. There's yeah. no really... There's toasted sandwiches on the run. That's it. Yeah. Macca's <laughs> is open after a show yeah. and that's pretty much it, or servo yeah. pies. That's pretty much what you eat. Yeah. And uh, so I, I went to CBD oil. I got some and it completely controlled the epilepsy. Mm. Like I wasn't even having auras. Mm. And that was fantastic. And But the other thing is it's illegal in Australia and you can't take it through airports. So I unfortunately had to go on to a, a, a pharmaceutical route of uh, mm -hmm. uh, Tegretol, mm -hmm. which uh, you know is, is a weight, weight gainer. It slows you down. It, I'm on a very low dose, so that's yeah. good. But a lot of people aren't. Mm. And a lot of people are dealing with these problems that perhaps would have a benefit from a natural substance Mm. Um, but CBD, they can't get it. Mushrooms, they don't know about it. Mm -hmm. There's no. some education there. Absolutely. Yeah. What would you tell people about mushrooms? Once again, you know, when we're talking about, sh we're not talking about shrooms here. We're talking about basically things that grow that can help people. Exactly. And uh, I mean, going back to that piece about that education and wanting a natural form, we've already been using these mushrooms within pharmaceutical realms for a long time. Forty percent of all. Pharmaceutical drugs are derived from mushroom. So if we look at penic really? penicillin, saved okay. hundreds of millions of lives, comes from penicillium from the fungi kingdom. If we look at immunosuppressants, so things to, you know, you're getting an organ transplant, you have an immune suppression issue, then we're using a fungi derived pharmaceutical drugs. Statins, which is the most uh, you know, widely used cholesterol lowering medication, globally, this also is derived from a fungi. So We've already been playing in the fungi realm in a in a medical pharmaceutical way, and now it's sort of taking it into an everyday use, um, where people are just adding it to their coffees and teas for you know lower level benefits in a preventative mode. Mm. You know, we're really t thinking about prevention now. I guess where did you, you said before about how has it changed in the UK in football or in rugby compared to 20 years ago? It was just tape it up, you'll be right, get on with it. And now it's all prevention. It's all thinking, you know, in advance. You're doing that with your sleep right now. So you, even you're becoming an athlete in that sense. So it's all thinking in prevention. And mushrooms are a huge part of that prevention strategy for aging um, and just for feeling better every day. Mm. And this, as you said, with the sleep, like I'm using this to, particularly being away, and I just got back from overseas and the jet lag and stuff. Like I train uh, in mixed martial arts, and to mm. go and train every day is a, it's a big tax on the body. By if I train in the morning yeah. at ten o'clock, by three o'clock I'm done. It's a long way down for you. Absolutely, it's a long <laughs> way down for me. <laughs> um, so I I've been using this to sort of and it gives you a bit of a scale every day of like okay you're at sixty percent train but don't go flat out. Mm. Hey you're at seventy five percent go for it sort of thing today. And I think a lot of people just as we spoke about before with people like Dave Asprey, mm -hmm. uh, people like him, people like Ben Greenfield, mm -hmm. uh, people that I've been introduced to through like Joe Rogan's podcast, he is able to give people this voice to the world where they're using their their body as mm -hmm. a, a, a place to test different theories, te test different substances, yeah. and these biohackers. Mm -hmm. Like this is this is an interesting this part is a, of the world, yeah. isn't it? And this is what yeah. your not your whole business is, is delving into, but it's it's very much in the same realm. It is in a way. It's definitely trying to bring what typically only elite athlete people would would have and know in terms of that knowledge. I guess that's what podcasters are doing. They're saying, "Hey, I've got the time and money and exp experience and education to to learn this, but let me amplify this message to a hundred thousand people, so you can all." tap into that knowledge in terms of Rogan or Greenfield or what you're talking about with CBD. So mushrooms are a part of that in terms of everyday use, mm. in terms of using those those extracts to get those benefits. So yeah, biohacking, I was just in LA, you know, everything in LA is about vanity and not aging and looking as good as you can for as long as you can. And there's biohacking with Botox. I think that's probably taking it a bit far and a bit pear-shaped, but stem cells is an interesting area, mm. um, cryotherapy, um, you know, breathing, meditation, all of these Eastern traditions actually are huge parts of biohacking. I think stem cells is so unfortunate for stem cells because they had that moment in the early 2000s or late 90s mm. where it was all from fetuses and that's mm. where they were getting stem cells from. And that's sort of like it's still tarnished with that brush, although yeah. I think now they can just get them from, is it the, uh, the, the, uh, the cord, the umbilical cord they can get stem cells yeah. from and places yeah. like that. It's yeah. not actually from. Or you can, a, yeah, you can harvest them on a cellular level. So they've gone okay. around that now. 
vegan friendly, so that's um, that's positive. <laughs> that's gross. Let's go back to fetuses. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think it's just such a, it's it's the natural human progression. We get to a point. Mm-hmm. Okay, we've cured this disease. We've covered this disease. Well, this is all fine. Everyone's mm-hmm. living to hundred years mm-hmm. old or thereabouts. Mm-hmm. How do we go further? It's like that whole sort of mm. let's go to the moon situation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We've got into space. Well, let's get to the moon. Okay. Let's get to Mars. Yeah. I think it's why the human species has been so successful because mm. we always push for something more. We always want more. We just want more. So what do what you is, want? What does that look like? What do you want? I want people using mushrooms widely. Okay. I think genuinely CBD has a, an amazing space, a place yep. in everyday life for people or weekly life or whatever it may be. I think mushrooms as well are a part of unlocking humanity's potential in the sense of I think we're a bit dormant at the moment. We can say we're achieving a lot, but there's still many issues that we face at the moment in terms of polluted seas, you know, in terms of division and, and control and hierarchies and people living in poverty, people living on the streets. That just shouldn't exist. Of course. It doesn't need to exist when you've got other people living in these enormous houses and things Next like that. Next door. So to I think that all of that can be help solved by that whole looking within piece but that whole everyone has a toolkit that helps them in terms of stress sleep all of those things getting that base level of sleep stress mental health mood diet down pat and mushrooms from our point of view play a very important role in that and if you look at through evolution you know one billion years ago mushrooms were really understood to be the first i guess living organism on this planet and they laid the foundations for the forest, they laid the foundations for animals, they laid the foundations for humans in many ways. And if you look at a lot of cave paintings and a lot of shamanic rituals, mushrooms were used widely as a food source, mm. as a source to connect to deities and gods, and, yeah. you know, known as flesh of the gods, the, uh, the magic mushroom. Mm. So um, again, there's so many mushrooms, they all play their role. What are we doing? We believe in our extracts, we believe in, in these consumer products, making them high quality and making them accessible because people have a very busy life. Every, every, it's a funny point you, you, you mentioned there. something I was going to bring up. Every ancient mm. culture, every ancient society seems mm. to have this connection with some sort of psychedelic, whether it be mushrooms over in South America or mm. be a part of a tree in South America. Here, I think in Australia, was uh, the Aboriginal people used, I think it was the wattle mm. uh, tree. I'm not 100% sure on that. It's something I read a long time ago. But everyone sort of had this weird connection mm. where they would have these uh, these rituals where they would delve into other worlds. Yeah. Why do you think people would Why? do that? I mean, again, we just want more. We just yeah. want more, we want to know more, we want to learn more, and so maybe that... But everywhere. I mean, they must have stumbled across it. Yeah. Um, again, all the tools are in nature, and it's about working with nature, not against it, which is what sort of, I guess, we're in the space of biotechnology, which means, you know, biology and technology and fusing those together. And you can fuse those together and you can create GMO crops, um, which we know is pretty disastrous. It's a small short-term game, but then you need pesticides and you need all of this a whole host of things to keep that moving versus working in harmony with nature in terms of regenerative agriculture or regenerative farming. So I think going back to that piece, I think uh, humans have just naturally been inclined to discover, to want more, and understanding that within those forests, within those savannas, within the Amazon, within all of these areas, there's you know gold and treasure mm. in the form of natural medicine and natural plants and mushrooms and etc. And mm. so, some of them so happen to be uh, you know psychoactive, and so they connect you to something beyond yourself. Mm. I'm, I'm fascinated by that. It's something mm. I would um, I would like to try. Mm-hmm. Things like, you know, trying to access things through DMT and things like that. But that terrifies me too. Mm. I, I don't like the idea of being uh, out of control or, or having your mind taken over, if you will. It's mm. something that interests me, mm. but I don't, I don't think I'd ever have the balls to do it. I mean, and absolutely, it's sort of, I think it's something that these shamans, you know, that you hear and read about, you know, they've been trained and uh, they've been doing this for decades and it's been passed down for generations and generations. Mm. It's not a new thing. And it's not a buzzy thing that you take uh, when you go to a, a party or you go to Coachella or something. It's not, it wasn't used in those forms. And I think obviously in the 60s and 70s, the cat got out of the bag and everyone was, in the, in the US especially, was using different psych- psychedelics. And um, it sort of, you know, I guess, went the other way where it was open sourced and it was a free for all um, versus the thousands and thousands of years before then where it was used very traditionally mm. um, and it was you know, used for healing purposes. So there's something there. It is coming back. The conversation in the U.S. at the moment is, you know, it's all very much decriminalizing uh, psychedelic mushrooms um, for the treatment of PTSD and depression. 
because as we were talking about with mental health, what do people do? So we sort of suggested some fermented foods and things, but beyond that, what if someone's seriously in a bad way? And at the moment, the uh, you know the SSRIs or the serotonin uptake inhibitors or whatever they are called uh, are not working as well mm. as they could be. I mean, I've had uh, close people to me be on antidepressant medication. You know, I've read all the books. I was still not really able to help them find a way out of it. Um, and neither were their psychologists at times. So it is a very much a, a dark area where mm. we need help. And maybe I think those psychedelic mushrooms or other psychedelics in a controlled environment with clinical therapists has a lot of opportunity and that's where things are heading. And a lot of times when you mentioned the uh, the use of psychedelics in the treatment of PTSD, mm. uh, depression, a lot of the time it's not these massive doses, is it? It's, it's a microdose. Mm -hmm. So people are having a, a little bit... What does that sort of do? Do you, do you have a concept of what that what that does for a person in that situation? Yeah, well, it's really just the, uh, I mean, it's very new. I guess there's like a society called MAP Society, yep. Multidisciplinary um, Psychedelic Society. There's the London Psychedelic Society. Um, we don't have any affiliation with these companies, but we know they're doing great work and we know um, that they're trialing it at the moment. It's really research. How does it work? Because, you know, some people it may work well for some people that may not. So it's just finding that, and that if it helps. formula. Yeah. You can go for it. Mm -hmm. You know, people who are in that situation, as we talked about before, where they're desperate. Mm -hmm. like if it helps people, and it's not going to hurt you. Yeah. Like, why? Why wouldn't you go for it? Yeah. Now you are a sponsor of this podcast. Mm -hmm. You bloody legend! Oh, we love you. Life. We love the big fella. Just <laughs> throw all your money into it immediately. But the first time we spoke, you had that pink shirt on. I said I can't not sponsor him. <laughs> let's, get him, let's get the guy a new shirt. It's a great shoe shirt. <laughs> comes directly from these guys. Now, you sent me a package. Now, where is that package? You sent me that this black the box. Yeah, it's the black box. What is the box next to it? That's some, some mushrooms growing right there. You're going to feast on those in a few days. Oh, how am I going to get them? Hang on. Can I touch yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Bring them over. What's going on here? What do we got happening? So, yeah, we've got the mushrooms growing out of the box. So, these are oyster mushrooms. So, this is coffee ground in here. So okay. We, so, the, the story started with Life Cycle in that. Uh, we were growing, coffee waste, growing mushrooms from coffee waste and uh, that's really where it started and we sort of got a lot of PR and media off of that because that circular economy piece is very important. How do we turn waste into food going yeah. forward? How do we become more economical in how we live? And so, yeah, this mushroom box grows in 14 days and uh, you have a crop ready to harvest and then you put it in the plate, risotto, with, oh, okay. with your eggs, with your avocado and toast, whatever it may be. So these are, mm. what are these, oyster mushrooms? These oyster are like, mushrooms. you can buy these at Woolies, yeah? You can. Yeah, 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 yeah. So these aren't psychedelic mushrooms or anything like that, so no, don't, no. Freak, don't freak out <laughs> anybody. Um, but you also sent me this black box. Now, beautiful, by the way. Um, now I got this, and I didn't really touch anything because mm -hmm. it was confronting. Because mm. I hadn't, I had heard of these, I didn't know exactly what they did, but I'll just hold it up so you guys can see. Comes in like that. I won't spill it, I swear. And so you've got, well, I'll let you explain what they are. I yeah, a different range of mushrooms. The, uh, you know, these are all very foreign names to people hearing them for the first time. Absolutely. You have the purple reishi, um, which is really, you know, the reishi mushroom is, again, in Chinese medicine, it's on in all the temples. It's in a lot of artwork. It was a mushroom that was revered. Um, and given to sort of the princes and the kings and the queens as a as a very big important token. So this was harvested wild in in Chinese medicine and used over there for a long time. Still is today. Really turning down the volume, uh, a subjectively calming, uh, you know, mushroom. Is this something you'd have in the morning at night? Yeah, in the evening, it's a great one to add to your tea. Okay. Uh, so it's a nice sort of mushroom light flavoring and uh, add it to your tea. And um, yeah, what does it taste like? Yeah, try one, Matt. Try one out. <laughs> which one? Which one should I try out? Well, what is it? It's 11 in the morning, so um, we should have some cordyceps mushroom. Okay. So this mushroom is very popular. A lot of research was done on it after a couple of young Chinese women. Uh, you can add it to your water there. Sure. Yeah. So you just add so it in So you're putting like in what? That's going to be, once we add two, that'll be one mil there. Okay. So, so a mil of that. Doesn't really smell... Too bad. I it's noticed it does pretty, have alcohol powerful. in it. They're ethanol water extract, so it's called a dual extract. It means you're getting all of the uh, the mushroom out of the mushroom, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, I thought that was going to taste like shit. I'm not, I know this is like these guys are sponsors, but that doesn't taste <laughs> that bad at all. No, that's the, I mean, we didn't realize until we went over to the US recently because tinctures uh, in the US have, you know, it's been going for a long time. In Australia, people don't usually use tinctures, they use 
capsules or powders. Yep. Um, but tinctures, a liquid extract is more bioavailable. Sure. Um, so it absorbs quicker, it absorbs into your system quicker, and then as well as that, they typically taste disgusting. Mm. Um, but I guess we've worked very hard. We've grown from you know a couple of guys growing mushrooms to a very advanced team of you know a biotechnology engineer, uh, a mycologist, and a couple of other key team members that we didn't even know what these professions were um, that are developing great product. So, so the cordyceps, they taste good. What is what does this achieve? This is turning the volume up. Okay. So cordyceps, uh, Tibetan Viagra is what it's known as uh, in the Himalayas. Hey, watch out. So the, the missus is here, so we're going to cut this one short. Sorry, guys. Bigger motherfucker. <laughs> Scale it up, son. So, um, I mean, it's wild harvest. I mean, the, the great thing about these mushrooms is that, again, they've been around for thousands of years. There's lots of stories about them, anecdotal stories. There's a lot of research as well. The turkey tail mushroom, which we were talking about before in terms of gut health, been some great research out there. Um, there was a $2 million study done with the National Health Institute in the US around using turkey tail in conjunction with other medications for gut health and for other illnesses, and that showed great results. So there's a lot of research out there, there's a lot of anecdotal uh, stories as well since millennia. Mm. And then I guess from our point of view, we just believe in growing uh, and extracting in Australia because most of these mushrooms at the moment, 95% will come from China. Mm. And so I think, you know, as an Australian, we know. If we have a preference between a Chinese product or an Australian product, we want that. And if you're Chinese, yeah. if you're Chinese, you would prefer an Australian product as well. Sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so um, we're passionate about that. So, I mean, you you look at these and you go, okay, you add these to teas, you add it as part of your diet. Um, is it all anecdotal evidence? How do you prove a lot of these things? Mm. Like, how do you prove number one, they're not harmful? Mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting they're harmful, mm -hmm. but how do you prove that? How do you prove they help people? Is it all anecdotal? Mm -hmm. And what are the long-term studies on these mm -hmm. mushrooms? And, and not just one in particular, but yeah, if you could yeah. touch on a few. Yeah, I mean, from our point of view, we are a farmer and a grower and a producer. Um, we're not sort of here to say uh, this treats this of or course. that does that. Um, so we're just here from, a, from an efficacy point of view. We do pesticide testing, um, mycotoxin testing, all of these sort of safety testing to make sure that the end product is safe to use. And I think in the future where that's going to go to across every food product is that we should have a QR code um, and understand what that those lab tests said for our macadamias, for our avocados, for all of other foods. So again, full transparency, I think, will be the future of marketing in terms of exactly all those things you said. How do we know this is safe? Because actually, if we look at almonds, if we look at macadamias, if we look at honey, a lot of pesticides used in those. In the honey, there's a lot of antibiotics that are coming through the honey. And so I guess that whole food safety piece is very in question at the moment because there's so many tactics and tricks needed to grow mm. large amounts in smaller volumes to ensure we have the margin for the company to reach profit, et cetera, et cetera. All those capitalistic measures are really, I guess, putting a threat on our food security and safety. And so from our point of view, it's the pesticides, it's the mycotoxins, it's, many, it's a heavy metal testing as well, which we know in China, there's a lot of heavy metals in the soil. We know up to 40% of soil in China is not farmable. Okay. Um, because of the previous generations of what's taken place. So I think, yeah, from our point of view, we just want to provide an Australian product um, that is grown here. And we can, I guess, we will have QR codes on our bottles very soon, probably early next year, where you can look it up and it will show you the lab tests. So again, showing that transparency so you can have trust in those things. So obviously people are having, uh, they're eating honey, they're having this, they're having that. It's mm. smashing not only, you know, little toxins getting through into the body and forming maybe cells that are going to be dangerous in the future, but also smashing your gut floor at this moment. Which right. takes us into, sorry, just to segue into the key buzzword there would be antimicrobial resistance, which is resistance to antibiotics, which is the World Health Organization put as a sort of a top three issue. Sure. Um, HIV, Ebola, and antimicrobial resistance, which means humans consuming small amounts of antibiotics in trace amounts, generally through their food, and then so when they need the antibiotic as a life-saving drug, it doesn't work. Superbugs. Mm -hmm. Superbugs. That is terrifying. Mm -hmm. To think that your one line of defense doesn't work. Yeah. And you just go, fuck. Yeah. And That's the basic it's reaction a, there. It's, it's the moment of silence. Uh, so it's not just people like not having the full course of antibiotics or being, or being given antibiotics like every couple of weeks because they've got a cold or a sniffle, mm -hmm. but through the food. It's both. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely that uh, that piece around maybe being used, again, because what other tools did we have in the toolkit? 
Um, it was just antibiotics or antibiotics. Yeah. And so there's a lot of technology and a lot of research happening now to find other solutions. Uh, we're working with animals in that space. Um, it's mostly across Europe and the US. In terms of doing research, we did a trial with bees uh, in Quebec, Canada, where we were able to show that some of our extracts increased the lifespan of the bee by 8.22% when they took the extract versus when they don't. Well, and when a bee lives for somewhere between 35 and 50 days to add an extra 8%, you'd take an extra 8% Absolutely, if you get it. So Only deathbed bi- if you could take hacking. 8%. Yeah. And so colony health, colony populations for bees are very important. So again, this is biohacking. This is you know, how do we think about the future? It's how do we think about implementing and working with nature? And mushrooms are a huge part of that. And so um, antimicrobial resistance, superbugs, big issue. Can mushrooms play a role? Yes, they will. Yep. Okay. I mean, there's so much to cover in this space. <laughs> and obviously, you know, you have that, all, this, all this information in your mind. Let's just go through these other ones. We've got mm. lion's mane, which we talked about before, which helps people with... Um, if I'm right in saying anxiety, mm-hmm. uh, depression, all those type of things, is that? Um, there's research on there, not so much suggesting any of that actually, suggesting more so that the, the nerve cell. Nerve growth refact- nerve. Yeah. Let's get it, yeah, NGF. MGF. Nerve, nerve growth factor, factor, which helps stimulate the nerve cell to repair okay. a neurogenesis. There's some great research in the US, in China, in Japan, that shows that the lion's mane mushroom, whether you're consuming it as a fruiting body, an extract of powder has great results in doing that um, while you're taking it. Once you stop taking it, it doesn't sort of work. So that's sort of like, it'd be like coffee. You take coffee, yeah. you get caffeine, you get a benefit. Um, so it's sort of like that with the mushroom. And when I read about that, I, my mind went straight away to um, uh, a CTA, head injuries, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the idea that people are having head knocks. Mm. And okay, so if you, if you hit your toe, big toe on a bed, yeah. and you break your toe, mm. you're going to get some ice on it, you're going to yeah. rest it, you're going to do all this, you might go and see a doctor, you might yeah. strap it to the other toe. Yeah. But you get a head knock, yeah. chances are, particularly if you're a young sportsman or you, mm-hmm. you had a night out and you got in a push and shove or you fell mm-hmm. over or whatever, nothing really happens. Mm-hmm. But from what I understand is that with things like this, lion mane, potentially that could mm-hmm. help recover those things that we don't see. There's going to be a lot of research in that space. Anything neurological? I think Lion's Mane, there'll be a lot of research in the next 10 years um, in terms of dementia, Parkinson's, Mm. all of these things, but also just from an anti-aging preventative point of view to memory consolidation in students. In America, they're using a lot of Adderall. In colleges, just they love Adderall as a a study drug or a study supplement. And again, that has, we don't know the consequences long term for that, but again, it's another sort of artificial synthetic uh, drug, if you like. So Sort of like speed, yeah? I'm not sure of the detail, but it's something along those Fires lines. Fires you up, gets yeah. you moving, gets, gets you everything going. done. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So supplementing that out for a lion's mane is a perfect strategy from what it, we hear and see uh, in the research. Dave Asprey, who's a, you know, a big fan of some of our products, you know, he loves the lion's mane for improving his sleep and his REM sleep, and he goes on about it. And as I was saying, it was in his new book, Superhuman. So these biohackers are really dictating and, and putting themselves on the line in terms of being guinea pigs. Hmm. to show people maybe maybe we go down this path, maybe we use CBD, maybe we use other tools and strategies. Hmm. Um, and he's a big fan of that lion's mane for that. But um, I mean, I was a physio in my past life, so um, I know a lot about strokes and those sort of, I guess, uh, neurological conditions. And um, can lion's mane play a role? I think it can. That's great hmm. for a lot of people. You know, a lot of people, with even with me, with the epilepsy side of things, it'd be mm-hmm. great if there was something you could take as a preventative, as something that can help you recover. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what have we? What else have we got here? We've got what else have we got? The shiitake mushroom. Everyone knows the shiitake quite well. Everyone knows these mushrooms have good benefits. Um, it's just again, everyone's busy. Mm. Everyone's got kids. Everyone's got stress. Everyone's on the run. So, how do we consume the shiitake mushroom? Even though I should, um, and how do I consume one that's Australian grown and made? And so. Again, the extract is an easy way to add to your tea, coffee, smoothie. Um, what does the Chinese medicine talk about in terms of the shiitake mushroom? Well, they talk about photo-aging, so decreasing you know, the ability of your skin to turn over cells, so slowing down the aging process. Um, in terms of nails, you see a lot of testimonials around strength of nails and how quickly they grow as long as your hair as well. So okay. a bit of a beauty space is where it hangs out and Slow you see this receding of, hairline beautiful no yeah we can sl- put it down to second gear at the moment it's probably in fourth 
Well, it's been a great podcast, <laughs> mate, up until this point. <laughs> I'm here with you. It's all right. I'm, I'm in the passenger seat. It's all good. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I'm very sensitive about it. Uh, <laughs> it's but no, I, mean, I just I, want to poke the bear. Don't, don't touch me. <laughs> I, I think it's great. I think it's fantastic what you do. And I'm all about this. The, the natural alternatives to the mm-hmm. shit that people are putting in their bodies and, and that I put in my body, you know. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm not one to sort of throw stones. We've all, we've all done things that we're not proud of as far as what we put into our system. And mm-hmm. I think the more we, we think of ourselves as a car and the fuel we put in the, mm-hmm. and to get out uh, what we want within our life, whether it be in our personal life, our business life, or within our own sort of, uh, our own sort of mental scape, if you will. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, what you're offering here to the people of Australia and the good, fine listeners of this podcast is a fantastic thing. Awesome. awesome. Thank you very much for coming along, my Thank friend. I appreciate either. it. Yeah, cheers, Fantastic. Mate. Ladies and gentlemen, what a podcast. <laughs> Some of my best work. If you could go and look at that camera right now and tell look us all the things that we need to know how to reach out to you guys, get in there touch. There we go. There we go. We've got Life Cycle, at, which is L-I-F-E-C-Y-K-E-L.com. So that's C-Y-K-E-L. We made it hard for people to find us on Google. We didn't want any traffic or business, but if you want to check us out, that's how you spell it. Cycle, Instagram. like a cyclist. Just, just instead of saying fuck cyclists, have life cycle. We were uh, inspired by <laughs> Sweden and Scandinavia. That's how you spell it over there, Seekel. But uh, huh. so we were we were onto that before Greta. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> topical. Anyways, um, the mushroom boxes, the extracts, many other things we have going on. The bee boxes, the microgreen kits. We just want people growing food. Stage one. In terms of if you see food growing uh, on your kitchen bench, you just feel a little bit better. You connect to nature in some way when you're in your. Uh, you know, eighth level apartment mm. in Sydney, maybe you can sort of you know, see something grow, see something alive, and that brings a little bit of happiness to your day. So you achieve something, something too, if you can up. grow something. If you can. Oh, it's exactly, exciting. Exactly, exactly. Without pesticides, it's a bonus. Yeah. And so that's uh, what we do, that's what we have, and Instagram, Facebook, we might even get something up on YouTube. Thanks for that, Isaac. Pleasure. <laughs> My absolute pleasure. Well said. (laughs) (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you check out absolutely everything we've talked about here. They are a sponsor of the show, but uh, as I said, uh, these are things that I have uh, looked looked at in the past and something that really interests me. So I'm going to be over the next couple of months delving into the CV effects. And and as you know, if you've watched these videos before, that I like to try and work out around a lot of different things and see what benefits me. Um, and hopefully it benefits you as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe absolutely immediately. If you haven't done that, you're a pig of a man or a woman. Uh, make sure you check me out on Instagram. I'm on tour at the moment. I'm absolutely everywhere. Connor, is there anything else that I need to talk about? Clips channel. The Clips Channel. Ladies and gentlemen, the Clips Channel. If you can't digest all this mushroom business in one sitting, then you can go to our Clips Channel and you can get little tiny clips and you can take them wherever you want. If you're going on the toilet, check it out. You can listen to us talk about mushrooms and about the benefits while you're having a shit. Hooray! <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back next week. Make sure you stay tuned. We're not tuned, but click on the bloody video, please. Christ's sake, help me out. Love yous. Bye. Bye.